So historically, we have often used the horizontal jump test to ensure that our patients are ready to return to sport following an ACL reconstruction. However, it may not be the best jump test to do. Here's why. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So when it comes to ACL reconstruction return to sport criteria, the horizontal jump test has always been one of the key metrics that we use to make sure that an athlete is ready to return. However, a potential successor has been on the horizon for a little while now, and that is the vertical jump test. So the horizontal jump test, as you can see here, involves an athlete jumping and landing on the same leg, and we measure how far they were able to jump. The vertical jump test, as you can see here, involves an athlete jumping and landing on the same leg, where we measure how high they've been able to jump. But which one is actually better when it comes to ACL reconstruction return to sport criteria. So I found this fantastic paper by Kotsifaki et al from 2021 in which they took 20 healthy individuals and put them through the vertical jump test and the horizontal jump test. And during each test, they measured the percentage contribution of the hip joint, the knee joint and the ankle joint during the propulsion and landing phase of each jump, i.e. which part of the leg is being strained the most and therefore adequately tested during each jump. Really useful information. So what did they find? Let's start with the vertical jump. So during the propulsion phase, the jumping phase, the hip contributed 31%, the knee 34% and the ankle 35%. During the landing phase, the hip contributed 29%, the knee 34% and the ankle 37%. So the great thing about this is that we know that for the actual metric of how high the individual jumped, controlled by the propulsion phase, we had relatively similar contribution from each joint during this jump. So the results for the horizontal jump test were fascinating. So for the jump or propulsion phase, 44% contribution from the hip, 13% contribution from the knee, and 43% contribution from the ankle. For the landing phase, 24% contribution from the hip, 65% contribution for the knee, and only 11% contribution from the landing. This is incredible stuff. It shows us that actually the knee doesn't do very much during the jumping or propulsion phase, but does a lot to control the landing phase. So here's what's really important. As we've said, in the past, the horizontal jump test has been used a lot more than the vertical jump test when it comes to ACL return to sport criteria. And Kotsifaki et al. suggested that this is probably because it's much easier to set up and doesn't need any fancy equipment to measure the actual jump. But as the research shows us, the knee only contributes 13% to the jump, the measurement, the actual metric that we're analysing to determine whether or not they're ready to return to sport. In fact, this test really looks at the ability of the hip and the ankle combined when we think about how far the patient has actually jumped. On the other hand, with the vertical jump test, the fact that the propulsion phase has equal contributions from the hip, the knee and the ankle gives us a much clearer indication of what the knee is able to do than the horizontal jump test. And therefore, I will definitely be using this more and more in my practice. And really interestingly, Kotsifaki et al. then released a follow-up paper in 2022 looking at athletes who had been cleared to return to sport following their ACL reconstruction because they had had good metrics on the horizontal jump test. When they then took those athletes and put them through the vertical jump test, they had much lower scores compared to normal population who hadn't had any injuries. That kind of shows us that you can get by with the horizontal jump test if you've had an ACL reconstruction, but the vertical jump test will catch you out. So is there any place at all for the horizontal jump test when it comes to our ACL reconstruction patients? I think there is. Remember that the researchers found that 65% of the control of the landing phase comes from the knee. 
And therefore, we can use this test to physically check, can our patient control the landing with the horizontal jump test? Of course, it also is a really good measurement from a psychological perspective, because we can reassure the patient if they can control the landing, their knee is doing a good job. But if we're looking at things from a pure measurement perspective, it looks like we definitely need to be using that vertical jump in our testing battery before our patient can go back to sport. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Remember, you can also follow us on Instagram at Clinical Physio, and there's loads for you on our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.